And welcome to this edition of ACAP Today for the week of February 1st. Yes, it's February already, February 1st, 2020. I'm Jason Parent with the Arusta County Action Program. On this week's edition of ACAP Today, we're going to speak with Heidi Ratcliffe, who is the uh, managing and leading another wellness shelter here in central Arusta County in Presque Isle. The Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter has reopened at a local motel. And we're gonna chat with her about that effort in just a little bit, but before we get to that, as as we do every week at this time. We're going to check in with the news and information that you can use from us here at the Arista County Action Program and some of our key community partners. And we begin, um, as we usually do, by sharing with you that our offices do remain closed to the public. Our early care and education facilities are open for the children attending those facilities, but are close to the public as well. If you have any questions or would like to access services, please give us a call at 764-3721. Again, our press Style, Fort Kent and Holton offices are all uh, equipped with video doorbells and you are able to go to those doors um, and ring the doorbell and we will have a staff assist you from inside the building. But please do also consider calling the phone number at the Holton and the Presque Isle facilities that is on the banner on the side of the building as you see uh, here in this picture. We also want to let you know that we are diligently working with Maine Housing on the COVID-19 emergency rental assistance update. We don't have an exact date for you, but the program is expected to launch in February of 2021. We do know that the program will be able to pay for back rent all the way back to April 2020 for those who are COVID impacted and for those who have not received assistance through that period. Our community action agency, as well as all others across the state will be administering the program and we will be allowing individuals to apply for up to three months of rent at one time. Uh, so, and again, this program is for individuals whose income has been impacted directly by COVID-19, and there will be some more stringent guidelines uh, for this program than in the ones in the past, uh, more verification of income and things of that nature. So as we know when the date for the new opening of this program is, we will certainly pass that along to you. We also are pleased to partner with Northern Light AR Gould as we start a series called Community Action Conversations with their staff. Starting uh, in this month, uh, the ACAP team will present to our partners at Northern Light AR Gould about programs and services available here at ACAP. And we hope to expand these community action conversations with other organizations and maybe even with the public on a Zoom platform in the future. We are also uh, hearing and learning in the last week about the a special enrollment period that's been announced by the Biden administration as it relates to the COVID-19 public health emergency and specifically related to a reopening of the healthcare.gov, the open insurance uh, marketplace. Uh, specifically for those individuals who may have been impacted by COVID-19 and potentially lost their health insurance. This a special open enrollment period will begin on the 15th of this month and will run through the 15th of May. Uh, we do have a, a gentleman here at the agency, his name is Stan Targonsky, who is available to assist individuals in navigating the healthcare marketplace. So please give him a call at 554 4158 or email him at stargonski at acap-me.org if you'd like to speak with him before the special enrollment period opens on February 15th and he'd certainly be able to help you navigate uh, during open enrollment after that. We are also offering in partnership with Northern Light Health and our Let's Go 5210 program uh, here at ACAP, the Winter Challenge Bingo. Uh, this is a, again a partnership. Uh, it's going to offer you the opportunity to see how many activities you and your family can do. We'll probably have a chat about this program on a future edition of ACAP today. But if you'd like to get a bingo card, um, please do uh, contact uh, us. Uh, it's available on our website. Uh, you can see the address there, acap-me.org slash blog winter bingo. Um, or you can contact Don Roberts at Northern Light AR Gould uh, for your uh, bingo card. Uh, we are encouraging folks to participate in this to help you stay active during these uh, colder winter months. The Young Workers Academy, the second edition of the Young Workers Academy, will be opening up uh, for eight weeks, uh, beginning on the 16th of February and running through the 8th of April. If you uh, are someone or know of somebody age 16 through 24 who's looking to start your career, this is a perfect opportunity to learn about employability skills, learn how to manage money, meet employers who are hiring, and also earn a salary through the work experience. There will be a work experience offered for all youth participating in the Youth Academy. Uh, please 
contact us at uh, ywacademy at acap-me.org or uh, call our main line and hit extension number five. Uh, we'd be happy to enroll you if you're age 16 through 24 or give you more information on this program, please do give us a call. The Aroostook Cash Coalition is once again sponsoring uh, IRS tax law certified volunteers to do work on tax preparation uh, through the tax season. Uh, but due to COVID-19, they are instituting safety precautions. Uh, they've pretty much gone virtual. It's a scan and go a virtual tax preparation service that is available by appointment only. Uh, documents will be scanned and handed back to the individual. Uh, they'll be prepared virtually and then the person returns uh, in about a week's time to review and sign for the e-electronic filing that would happen. If you have any questions, the United Way of Aroostook is the lead partner on this project. Call them at 764-5197. COVID-19 vac uh, COVID vaccination is a very hot topic right now. Uh, they are currently in phase 1b of vaccination, which means main, eight, main residents age 70 and older are now eligible for vaccination. We do uh, encourage you to go visit the main.gov slash COVID-19 uh, slash vaccine slash website uh, for information, all of the healthcare providers who have vaccines and how they are uh, administering those is available there. Um, this is especially if you are aged 70 or older at this time. All sites do require an appointment and we do note, as you are well aware, that the vaccine supply is limited and may not be available at all times. And the, as a result, schedules are done on a rolling basis. Uh, February appointments for the Home Energy Assistance Program are now available. Uh, this is an opportune time to apply. If you've never applied before, if you maybe applied uh, several years ago and weren't eligible at that time, the eligibility guidelines have increased dramatically um, and there's an opportunity there for we think hundreds if not thousands more Aroostook County residents to qualify for HEAP. Call us at 768-3053 to schedule an appointment today. You can also view on our website the eligibility criteria uh, to determine uh, if you may be eligible prior to giving us a call as well. We also want to let you know that our navigation program does continue. These are for any individuals or households or families who do not know at this particular time what services may be available for them but are in need of assistance. Please contact us at 764-3721 and we will connect you with a navigator and help you uh, through that process. We are also offering free uh, cloth face masks at this time uh, in response to the governor's mask mandate. Uh, and many people are also choosing to wear two masks at this time. So if you are in need of a mask for any purpose for you or your family, please do stop by our Fort Kent, Presque Isle or Holton office, uh, ring the doorbell, let us know and we'll get masks out to you. Or if you feel more comfortable, give us a call and we will mail those to you. Just tell us the quantity that you need. Our community closet is bursting at the seams right now. We've had some very generous donations come in of clothing. Uh, if you would like to donate clothing, you can certainly do that 24 seven by simply dropping it off at our, main, our 771 Main Street Presque Isle office. You are also welcome to come and take any clothing that is available in that um, small uh, enclosed facility out in front of our building uh, to the left of our main entrance. Uh, please do give what you can or take what you need. Uh, again, the Community Closet Project is here for you and for our entire community. Community cupboards are located across Aroostook County, including one here at our ACAP facility in Presque Isle. If you are in need of food assistance, uh, please contact us. We have a complete listing uh, of the County Food Resource Guide where these community cupboards are located and also where your local food pantry is located and perhaps the hours that may be available. Uh, they can also be found on ACAP's news and publications page online. Maine's Workforce Collaborative is uh, working together, uh, the three workforce regions in the state, to offer several uh, training workshops online. These include interviewing tips and tricks, making career choices, resume and cover letter development, job preparation, retention, and so on. If you would like to uh, register for these courses, they're free and available online at various times throughout the month. Please do give us a call and speak with our workforce team and they will navigate you to how to apply for those. Uh, the smoke-free work that we are doing within our agency extends to the Workplace Smoking Act that was established to protect employers and employees 
from the detrimental effects of environmental tobacco and smoke. If you are a business that has not recently updated your tobacco policy, that would include such things as vaping. Please give us a call. We're available to assist. Chastity Holland is available to assist you at developing those plans at no charge to your business or organization. And if you, um, in fact, do go through that process, we are also able to provide you with free signage uh, to hang at your workplace. And also, speaking of tobacco, quitting smoking is not something that's easy to do, but we do have a program here that can help you. Elaine Sipe is our tobacco cessation coordinator, and she's available to help you with things such as free quick kits, uh, virtual meetings that she's holding online, both with individuals and with groups, making a quit date plan, and also connecting you with free nicotine replacement therapies. Please contact Elaine at 227-2348 or at esipe at acap-me.org if we can be of any assistance in your efforts to quit tobacco products. And finally, uh, before we introduce our guests again for this week, uh, we just want to remind you that we do have some current openings. If you would like to join our ACAP team, please check us out online. Some great opportunities to become part of our ACAP team, and we hope that you do consider that. Uh, we'd love to have you join us. And with that, I am pleased to welcome to the program, Heidi Ratcliffe, who is a program coordinator and currently directing the Hope and Prosperity, both the Wellness Shelter, which we're going to talk about, but also the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center. Uh, Heidi, it's great to have you back on ACAP today. Thank you for having me. So tell me all about the new Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter, because this is something that we've done before and we're doing again, but in a very different way this time. It is. I didn't expect for it to happen as quickly as it did, um, but we were prepared and ready to go. We were approached um, by our partner, Maine Housing, and asked if we were able to meet a need in the community. Um, and our team, of course, is always able and willing to step up to ensure that needs are met for our um, community members. And that's exactly what happened. Um, so this time it's a little bit different. We we, our last wellness shelter was in an open facility. We utilized the space at Umby. Um, and this time we're using a local hotel. So uh, we were blocked out 10 rooms. We have a wing of the hotel that we provide shelter to folks um, who would otherwise have gone without. Um, we work really closely with um, the Sister Mary O'Donnell Homeless Shelter and we incorporate um, COVID tests in order for them to be able to go into housing because it's tight knit facility um, in order for everybody to go into the homeless shelter. They do want to ensure that all folks do test negative for COVID. So we hold them over here until those tests come back. Um, we do not take anybody that is showing any signs of symptoms with COVID because we're not designed to set up um, a place of that sort. Um, so, so far on our first day, we launched Monday. We had eight residents come in out of the 10 rooms that we had available. Um, in the meantime, we have been able to transition several folks over um, and we're getting two new intakes today. So we're at six as of today and getting another two. So we'll be back up to the eight again. So. So hi, uh, I'm going to put up a picture here. This is your, your team that was training. Uh, this was a uh, Friday, a couple weeks ago on uh, now. Um, talk about the work that the team is doing at the shelter on a daily basis. So we did. So we did a full day training on Friday with staff. Um, it's really important to ensure that staff understands the policy and the regulations for the safety of our all of our guests and for shelter staff. Um, so we do Narcan training, we do de-escalation training, and we do talk about a variety of um, situations that could happen when they're on the floor and how to be best prepared to handle those situations. Um, so at this point, our staff are trained and ready to go. We do have coaches here during the day. So during the day shift, when it's um, when folks are awake, we are able to provide assistance to those individuals in helping to secure their personal identification documents that they might not have, um, complete housing applications, potential referrals to our workforce team. Um, we really look at doing a holistic perspective with folks while they are in our, um, in our shelter and waiting to get them to the best place that they can be um, and hopefully no longer need our services here at the shelter. Yeah, that was a key part of the success, I would say, of the first shelter. Talk about those statistics a little bit, You, the people that you served and what some of the outcomes were. 
We did. Um, so in total, we had about 18 individuals um, utilize our facility last time um, at the wellness shelter, and we were able to house um, 15 of them before our shelter closed. Um, so we were successful with able to, assisting individuals in quitting tobacco, landing employment. Um, we had an individual was able to finish his high school English credit while he was with us. So there was a lot of partnership, a lot of connections that were made um, that made it possible. And, and it, it's really convenient and it works well with an agency that provides a lot of those services already. Um, so you know, we're aware of what services we have and the services that we don't within our organization. We ensure that folks are aware and make those connections that they're getting all of the services that they need while they're with us. Now, in terms of the impact on the individuals experiencing homelessness during this pandemic, what are you seeing and what are others seeing in terms of numbers? Are we seeing growing numbers in this time of economic hardship or are they pretty stable and we're just serving um, a population that's pretty much the same number wise? What are you seeing? I honestly think there's an increase in homelessness right now. Um, I think previously where um, the county is a huge area for couch surfing. Um, I think with COVID hitting um, and fear and concern, uh, people are less, more cautious about opening their doors to people who need it. Um, so I, I really feel strongly that that has a huge impact on why our numbers are a little bit higher right now um, is because of COVID and, and folks inability to maybe sleep on someone's couch that they would have in the past, or um, there's accessibility. Um, a lot of different places and resources are closed right now. So it's making it more difficult to obtain services that they may need to avoid that. Um, I do really feel strongly that COVID has affected the homeless population and, and the homelessness has increased because of that. Now, the, the work that you and your team do really does make a difference. Um, I know that you do, um, a lot of work with individuals in terms of, of, of letting them be in the driver's seat of the work that's going to happen. But a lot of it really has to do with uh, helping individuals understand, though they're in a difficult situation, that that situation doesn't define them. Isn't that correct? Absolutely. Um, that was one of the one of the big speaking uh, moments that I had with the staff on on Friday is that nobody is defined by their situation or any of the ailments that they have. It is a person experiencing mental health or a person experiencing substance misuse. Um, our job is simply to be there and to ensure that they have somebody walking with them through the process and somebody who is aware to to support them fully to ensure that they get their needs met. Um, 100, 110%, we believe fully that the person drives um, their action plan. And our job is to just ensure that whatever their goals are, we work with them to be able to reach that goal. In order to do the work that you're doing and to start this shelter up, it's really involved a lot of partners. And on the top of that list, obviously, is main housing, which has been critical. But you've also, you know, obviously you're working with a hotel, but you've had you're providing food, providing meals for the for these folks. Talk about the um, both of both, I guess, in this round and in the last round, the importance and the, and the critical nature of community partnerships to make something like this a go. It is. I don't, I don't think that there's one person who can do it all. And it's incredibly important to know what you can do at and what you can do well at. Um, so it's, it's being able to know when you need assistance from others in the community and how to partner with them to ensure um, that, you know, the, the parts that we don't do, they're able to complete. So we did reach out. We do have a local restaurant catering um, the food for our residents um, who's truly excelled. They deliver the meals to us. Um, just outstanding. I, I can't, um, whenever we ask to be partners with someone or help in a situation, it's always a yes, how can I help? What can I do? And how fast do you need it? And I think that speaks volumes for Rooster County and, and the partnership that we do have. Um, just the willingness to, to go hands deep and do whatever it takes to have needs met. Any idea how long this uh, extension shelter, this wellness shelter will be open, Heidi, at this point? We have a contract right now for three months, and then we'll reassess to ensure regularly uh, that it's still a need. Um, but right now it's about a three month process. And what, um, what are you and your staff learning um, as you operate a shelter uh, of this nature as opposed to the one that you operated um, this spring? It's, it's a little different. There's, there's pros and cons to both. There was some really good um, opportunities in the previous shelter because it was an open space. So we had eyes on everybody at, at of all of the residents at all times. And that created a safety comfort um, level for a lot of the residents and, and to ensure that um, 
we had eyes and that they were safe. Uh, it's a little bit different as everybody's in their own room, but we have established new policies and protocols to ensure that we still have eyes on and access as much as we need to to ensure that everybody is safe. Um, it is much easier to monitor a hallway than an entire gymnasium, I can assure you that. And so that has been one of the big takeaways is that um, it's, it's a smaller size than we were used to with the other facility, so it is much more easily manageable. Um, space-wise. Great. Um, anything else about the shelter that we should know or that you want to, you know, impart on the community at this point? I don't think so. I, I think the biggest thing is for anybody who is interested in having folks who may need shelter, they still need to contact um, Sister Mary O'Donnell's Homeless Shelter. They need to contact them first. And then at that point, they will send those individuals over to us. We have had some individuals reach us directly, and unfortunately, we have to send them back there first. Um, so all individuals or anybody that you know experiencing homelessness that does need a place to stay, do reach out to our local homeless shelter first. Um, and then they will coordinate with us appropriately and we will ensure that they will be housed one way or another. Um, just need to figure out those details, but that is the correct way of approaching it and, and finding someone housing the fastest way. Excellent. While I have you uh, quickly, we talked about rental assistance a little earlier. I know your team is uh, ready and, and, and mobilizing uh, to advance that forward. Um, how did that process work for you in the months of April through December last year? And what are you looking uh, forward to in this new program? It was it was very busy. Um, we had a team that was able to kind of pull up their sleeves and do what it took in order to ensure that rental assistance needs were met. Um, we continued to change the process to try to figure out what was the quickest way that we could um, get applications in a timely manner, ensuring our customer service was up and that customers were always contacted back within a 24 hour period. Um, we are ahead of the game this time. Um, it, I'm excited to be able to launch this next round um, with staff prepare, prepared, already having the information of what we need to do to go forward um, and, and to just start that, that, that project that's so, that helps so many individuals that's so needed right now. Um, I, I know that it's gonna be a huge surplus of individual and applications the first day that the program launches, um, but our team is ready to go and we will do the best that we can to meet everybody's needs as quickly as possible. And the other component that your team is working on that's a re it requires folks to go through the Department of Health and Human Services initially, but you're providing quarantine social supports. Can you talk about that just briefly yeah. and what that's all about? Sure. So we do um, provide quarantine supports. So anytime an individual is referred or calls um, the CDC and they're in uh, isolation or quarantine um, and they need supplies in order to stay in isolation and finish out their quarantine, um, one of our coaches are reached out and we reach out to those families to ensure that they understand the importance of staying in quarantine, finishing the isolation, and what can we do to ensure that they're able to reach that. So sometimes it means that our coaches do a store run and we pick up milk and bread and eggs for people and drop it off in the driveway and run. Um, just whatever they need to ensure that they finish out the quarantine so that we don't continue to spread um, the virus and that we try to do our best to stop as much as possible. So um, that has picked up as cases have increased in the County, so our coaches have done a little bit more um, than we had previously in other counterparts of the state, um, but we're, we're at an even keel at this point, so hopefully that means that our cases are decreasing again and, and we don't have to do too many uh, runs to ensure that people are able to stay in quarantine. Great, and um, also on top of that, you mentioned your coaches and your coaching team still <laughs> continues to do their great work. There are some, some pandemic related, some non-pandemic related work across Aroostook County, right? We do, we do. We do have the coaching team who we've just, uh, we just implemented a new action plan with all of uh, the families that we do serve to ensure that we're doing everything possible and they understand each step that it takes in order to reach the outcome. Uh, we've had some great outcomes from that. We're super excited about launching that new step um, as an additional support for the families that we serve so it's been busy we are really busy right now so you certainly are the uh, personification of drinking water from a fire hose right now aren't you <laughs> that is a fantastic analogy <laughs> it is coming it is coming fast and furious and you are handling it like a pro and we certainly appreciate all you're doing and most importantly i think that the people of aroostook county are the ones who are benefiting directly from the work of you and your team and you have a fantastic team and they have a fantastic leader so thank you so much that i do thank you very much i appreciate it 
And with that, before we leave you on this week's edition of ACAP Today, we do want to remind you that whether it's a service that you need, if you know of somebody who's maybe housing insecure um, and wants to connect with us, we will help you get connected with the Sister Mary O'Donnell Shelter so that they can uh, assess uh, where you need to go. But uh, please do connect with us, whether it's on that service or the navigation services we talked about earlier, or uh, if you'd like to hear more about our coaching programs. Um, and we'll be, of course, uh, activating rental assistance as soon as we have the go ahead. But please connect with us 764-3721 info at acap-me.org or you can look us up online at acap-me.org check us out on facebook uh, we also have a youtube channel and we're on twitter as well uh, and then uh, of course uh, we end each week as we do with our snapshot of the week and this is one of our Prescott Regional Career and Technology Center students making the most of the snowy conditions, not a lot of snow right now, but certainly enough to play outside and turn a what would short, certainly be a traditional sand castle if you were on the beach, uh, working that into a wonderful snow castle. So we thank all of our early care and education families uh, for helping your children bundle up so that they can play in the snow each day and get some fresh air. And thank you to our team at the Prescott Regional Career and Technology Center for sending us this snapshot of the week. And with that, that's this week's edition of ACAP Today. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week when we're back with another webisode. Talk to you then. Bye.